Welcome back to the Tigers Den Podcast, guys. Before we get started, you know what we got to do. Smash that thumbs up button. Subscribe if you're brand new. And don't forget, ring that bell. Join the Noti Squad. Hit those links down in my description. Follow your boy on Twitter, IG, and Facebook, at Big C Got Game. Well, our Tigers moved to 3-0 after a tight one against Alabama. It was ugly in the first quarter. Then GSU exploded in the second for 28 points. Then held the ball for a majority of third and fourth quarter. Able to pull away, winning the game 42-27. to Chris King had an ugly game at the beginning, but caught fire in the second quarter. Finishing 24-30 for 261, three touchdowns and one interception. Chris could not get the ball moving at all in the first quarter. Then all of a sudden, it just something clicked with the offense. We were able to start hitting like the little dink and dunk passes, the curls, the slants. Our corner routes were open. The only thing that we did not get going was our passes to our tight end, Tim Clark. Uh, but we'll talk about more of that in a few minutes. On the ground, business as usual. Pierre Jackson is turning out to be a star. Finished with 35 carries, 218 yards, and two touchdowns in a rivalry game against Bama. Now, don't get it twisted. Bama's defense is not trash. They are a very good defense. So for him to put up numbers like this, he is going to be a star for Grambling State for years to come. Out wide, Antonio Walker led the way for us with 10 catches for 119 yards. Jordan Paxson has six grabs for 75 yards and two touchdowns. Bobby Smith had three catches for 28 yards, and Will Carter caught three balls for 13 yards, and he had a touchdown as well. Now, Tim Clark is down there. He had one catch for 18 yards. It was a big catch, but they were double-teaming our tight end for majority of the game. Uh, we were able to at least get one pass to him on a third and long. Honestly, uh, during the season, I would love to see Tim get at least four to five catches every game. It was a rough week for our defense, but they bit down on that mouthpiece and got the job done. Brandon Gidd led the way with eight tackles. Stovall, Johnson, and Clemens each had seven. Shout out to Jason West. He had a big game, four tackles, one for loss, and he also took an interception back to the house. But talking about interceptions, we got to talk about Travis Haley. He had two tackles, but he had two huge interceptions that led to uh, Grambling State points, man. This red shirt freshman, he plays middle linebacker for us in the dime, and then he plays uh, safety in our quarter defense. And uh, he's going to get a lot more playing time now just because of what he was able to do this week. So we dig deeper into the stats, and like I said, it was ugly, man. Bama outgained us in total offense. Uh, we outrushed them big time by almost 100 yards. They outthrew us by 100 yards. Uh, we had a terrible showing on third down, finishing three of nine. Why Bama finished six of nine, but we were four for four on fourth down and perfect inside of the red zone. I'm proud of our defense, though. We did force three turnovers that led to points for Grambling State. And all total yards, we won. And look at the time of possession. Uh, I'll tell you this, start of the third quarter, I did put the true clock on. I wanted to keep the ball out of Alabama's hands. It was going to be tough for us to stop their offense. They were running all over us. They were throwing the ball across the field. So the more we held on to the ball, the better chance we had of winning. Taking a look at your top 25 this week, Grandma State still sitting in the number one spot, and they have uh, Southern University up next. USC is in at two. Oklahoma comes in at three, Mississippi State in at four, Bama's down a spot to five, Texas A&M fell three spots to six, Michigan's back up three spots to seven, Ohio State jumps up three spots to eight, UCLA jumps up six spots to nine, and Florida rounds out your top ten. So no recruiting video this week. I am working on the recruiting special video as we speak. So be on the lookout for that. So make sure you guys ring that bell, join the Noti Squad, and make sure you get notified when your boy is uploading. So it's rivalry week. We are headed to the Mercedes-Benz Superdome to take on the Southern University Jaguars. SU comes in 0-2 on the year with losses to Cal and SMU. The Jags this year are led by junior quarterback Alex Montoya, but he is hurt this week. So they will be relying on backup Isaac Robinson. He's a 6'4", 210-pound freshman from Timberlane, Louisiana. He's uh, thrown 17 passes in his career, 146 yards, one touchdown, one interception. Taking a look at his traits, and he is not good at all, man. No speed, 
to worry about. His power and his accuracy are no concern. Uh, the big deal for us is to keep this guy contained. Uh, you know how the computer gets sometimes. When you let them scramble out, they turn into beast mode running backs. Uh, so we got to make sure we keep these guys contained and we wrap up this week. In the backfield is senior Anthony Peterson. He's still a stud, 90 overall. He is the star on this team, and his backup is no slouch, Alonzo Roberts. He's the power back out of the two. Uh, we will be focusing on a run this week, so look for us to keep at least uh, eight in the box to stop their run game. Out wide, junior wide out Nathan Lawrence is the star on this team. He's a 79 overall. Then you have John Smith and Jim Branch. Now, this, record, this receiving core is kind of deep. Uh, they have at least four or five wideouts that can make plays. But up against our secondary, I have no concerns. And their O-line is weak. From left tackle to left guard, center. The center is their best lineman as an 81 overall. Their right guard is no good, and their right tackle is no good. So look for us to be pinning our ears back and get it after the quarterback. Now, on the defensive line, Ken Gunn, he could be a solid player for their defense as well as Kevin Downs. They both can get after the quarterback. Up the middle, Derek Cameron and Mike Key can plug some holes, but they're kind of weak at linebacker. Will Cummings, he's uh, the best player on this defense as of right now. Jimmy Osborne is a solid middle linebacker. He's only a sophomore, so he'll get better. And Jeff Brink, they're starting right outside linebacker. He is out this week, so that means Derek Ruffin, a 6'6", 226-pound sophomore, will see some playing time. In the secondary, Kyle Gray is the best quarter on this team, and he is meh. <laughs> 74 man coverage, 81 zone coverage. He has decent speed, though. Uh, play rec is decent, but up against our right, uh, our wideouts like Antonio Walker, Bobby Smith, and Jordan Paxson, these corners stand no chance. At free safety, James Beach is a thumper, and freshman Brent Butler is at strong safety, and he's a 69 overall. And, of course, Herbie is rolling with the Grambling State Tigers. Here's my question for you guys. How many points do you think GSU will put up against Southern? Do they go for the record of over 100 points in a game? Leave those comments down below and let me know what you guys think. But in the meantime, that is going to wrap it up for this Tigers End podcast. Thank you guys so much for watching. Make sure you smash that thumbs up button. Subscribe if you're brand new. Don't forget, ring that bell. Join the Noti Squad and hit those links down in my description. Follow your boy on Twitter, IG, and Facebook at Big C Gat Game. And we'll talk from the Mercedes-Benz Superdome. Have a great day, guys. Two fingers in the air. Peace.